So, uh, good afternoon and welcome. Last night is one of my special nights uh, where we did the artist showcase, which will run through, I think, Saturday. I'll tell you, the talent that we have on this island in the, in the arts is just incredible. And thank you all. <clears throat> thank you all who contributed to that program. It's one of the reasons that Spring Island is such a special place. This is a very exciting day for Spring Island. And many, many people have worked many long, long hours to get to this point. And it's taken longer than I would have hoped. But we're finally there. And today, you're going to hear about the project. You're going to hear what it's going to cost. You're going to actually get to see a model of the project. After this is over, we'll put it in the library over at the River House, along with uh, maybe some storyboards uh, so you can look at it. There'll be another meeting on Monday at 9 a.m. Uh, if you want to come back and ask more questions, comments. And after the session, the formal session is over, we're going to open it up for questions and comments from the audience. Uh, I want to say before I turn it over to Tom, this has the 100% support of our board, the art committee, the committee that worked hard on behalf of the art committee to get this right for the artists on the island. So we've done our due diligence in trying to make sure this works for the artists and for the island. So with that, I'll turn it over to Tom Simon for the formal presentation. Tom? is to provide you with the uh, information that you're going to need as you, as you contemplate whether to support uh, or your willingness to invest in uh, what we're going to call for the time being a new art barn. Uh, my part of this presentation is going to take about 10 minutes and it's going to be sandwiched uh, around some remarks that Joel Newman, uh, who's the architect involved in the project, is, is going to make. So 20 minutes from now, uh, uh, we should be ready for your questions and your input. This process actually kicked off almost three years ago uh, with a survey conducted by the McMahon Group to determine community support for a variety of projects identified by the board's long-range planning committee. Uh, the last member survey this past May also provided us with some community sentiment. And this past year, the Arts Committee has collaborated with the board, the finance committee of the board, the long range planning committee, uh, as well as the, uh, 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 the club management to prepare this uh, proposal for you. Uh, so what we're gonna be doing today is, is, is presenting a vision for this and asking for your input uh, after the formal part of the presentation and any time after that that you'd like to offer it up. Uh, in a nutshell, this is, this is why we're here. There's a, a, a large segment of the membership that believes that the arts program should have the same kind of infrastructure that other amenities in Spring Island have. I want to emphasize that uh, the presentation that you're going to see is, is not a sales effort. This is not an attempt to persuade. The objective here is to provide you with information and answers to the gating questions that you could have or that you should have uh, as you contemplate Spring Island developing uh, a new art facility. Those questions, uh, the obvious ones being, what is this gonna cost? Uh, are there other big projects looming? Uh, what might a new art barn look like? Does the art community on Spring Island need a new art barn? Does Spring Island need a new art barn? What would happen to the old art barn and, and then what happens next? So, the important questions, what will this cost? The proposed building is 7,200 square feet, 6,700 of which are heated. The all-in design, construction, landscaping estimate is a million and a half dollars, which means that the cost per member is $4,300. Now, 
You have the option, if this is approved, of making that in one payment. It's very straightforward. If you'd like, though, uh, you may pay uh, in installments over the course of five years. And one more point on cost that I think is, is, is important uh, to consider, uh, it costs much, much more than this to build a house, uh, much, much more to build a house on Spring Island than it does to build uh, the proposed art barn. Uh, by any measure, this is a comparatively thrifty build. It's half the price of, of uh, what it costs to, to build the average house on Spring Island. Are there other projects looming? Well, the club board selected two projects from those that were researched in the McMahon's uh, 2015 survey, a new art facility and a solution to the present maintenance facility. Now, the maintenance facility, as many of you know, is, is a really important component in our infrastructure, but it's one that's in serious decline and no longer capable of meeting our growing needs. Fortunately, our finances are in very good health. So we've determined that the maintenance facility can be renovated and expanded over the next few years using uh, money from our operating budget and from our reserves. So the answer to the, to the question of looming projects is, is uh, uh, that barring an act of God like, a, like another hurricane, there are no plans to propose a vote for other assessments in the near future. So what might this, this art barn uh, look like? Uh, if you ask the right hemisphere of your brain, uh, it would want to describe the ideal art facility as being contextual, being compatible with and complementary of the landscape, the natural landscape and the built landscape, as well as offering an inspirational environment to the island's artists and would-be artists. The left hemisphere of your brain would want to describe the new art facility as cost-effective, functional, and convenient. In other words, humble. <laughs> Joel Newman, uh, who's been involved in this project, has had a profound influence on the Spring Island architectural vernacular. Uh, he understands Spring Island, what makes it special. Uh, he's designed the golf house, a number of the houses that you live in, as well as the Chichese Clubhouse. Uh, and I'd like to point out that he has been working with us uh, in a very favorable financial arrangement. Favorable to us, not favorable to him. But he's here today to talk a little bit about his vision for the project. Thank you. No, that's really kind of what you said, and I want to come out as saying I'm completely opposed to another hurt. <laughs> right off the bat. Um, we have had an opportunity use the mic. Oh, we have had an opportunity to participate in the life of Spring Island really since the beginning and uh, while he gave me credit for the golf house, I want to make sure that you all know Jim Thomas did that, my partner. Um, but we have been interested in what Spring Island is and really what it can be, really since as long as I've been involved in it for about 24 years. And so when this project came up, um, we were interested to participate in it and the gestation process of it has been really interesting. It's been going on for a long time. Thoughts about it, studies on it. Uh, we've had really nice opportunities to be involved with Betsy and other people who are artists here. Uh, and so it's something of great interest to us in general. And the, the site that was considered to work with is, is pretty spectacular. That's all there is to it. Uh, the building, uh, the ideas that were studied, even before we uh, started getting involved in it, when they were trying to put together a program with the committee <laughs> and that sort of thing, uh, they created a bit of a building uh, to start with just to understand how big a project this might be. So when we came on board, there was an idea of what this thing might be in terms of how much uh, space and what the things were that were needed for the artist community. And the time that we got involved in it was the point where we're trying to take the idea of their program and some kind of building and match it with this site. And what we normally do, whether it's a house or a project like this, 
as we go out to the site and have a look at it. Um, we worked on a couple of different approaches to this in terms of building systems, looking at uh, metal buildings, which are kind of simple industrial style buildings. And then the building that we're working on now is the same building uh, system as the stables are here. The Morton building system is kind of a, a simple, uh, cost-effective way to build big spaces, big simple spaces, and that's really what this is. So beyond that, the idea was to come up with some way to make a engaging artistic environment with a simple industrial building prototype and take care to make it relate really well in an inspirational way to a, a really great site. Um, I'm gonna step away from this for just a second. The, has everybody been to the site or? No. no. Okay. Well, it's across the street essentially from where golf maintenance is right now. There's a, there's a big tract of land across the road. So golf maintenance is essentially on the other side of the road here. And from the road, you just see a big patch of woods. It's a, a lot of forest in there. And the area on the side where most of the, of the entry and the parking is gonna be is kind of unremarkable. It's the type of uh, thicket that you all have seen here where it might have been a cleared field at one time and now it's a kind of a piney forest full of a lot of smaller trees, sapling trees. But once you get back in it, at the heart of it here is the kind of live oak grove that we have all over Spring Island. When you go you know, into live oak on the way to the clubhouse, it's extraordinary. And fortunately, it's mostly on what would be kind of the north side of a building. And so the idea, and again, we looked at a couple of different building prototypes, but the, the basic idea was to build a simple shed, just a big shed with a low eave on the south side and a high eave on the north side to take you know, the inspirational <coughs> engagement with this live oak forest that's out there. And that's really, that's really all there is to it. It's, there's not a lot of artifice to the building. It's not, you know, it's not highly detailed on the outside. It's a simple <coughs> metal shed, essentially. But we've got on that north side where we want that sort of even north light big windows so that when you're working in that studio, you've got that forest out behind you to look at. And most people I think would recognize that if we look out the window in one of these buildings and we see a live oak tree, all I can see out there right now is about uh, the first seven feet of something's about this big around. Not so great, right? If, if those windows go up and I can see the tree, now it's pretty engaging. And that's that's basically what this building is going to be. So when we move through these slides, you'll see how that's done. The only other thing I'll say is that the building is sort of broken down. One of the elements of the program was that you had the studio spaces and then you had the space for the, the play studio where you've got kilns and whatnot. It was a natural thing to separate that kiln building to keep that safe. You've got fire <laughs> and that sort of thing and keep it isolated from the building. We took the third piece, which is kind of the administrative piece in a studio for a visiting artist, made that a separate piece as well, so that this is basically a kind of a loose arrangement of three small buildings, essentially. I mean, the studio building is the biggest piece of it. Your relationship to it from the road is you're barely going to see it because there is such an amount of tree cover from here back in, and if you were to go out there and look at it, and wait for a car to come by, you'll see a little bit of a car going by, but it's pretty, it's pretty separated. So the main experience to me for a building like this was not you know, that we're standing back and looking at this beautiful clubhouse-like building, like a, a clubhouse nearly is always exposed to the golf course. You see it in whole. This kind of building is more about going in there and using it and looking out of it. What is it like from inside? So those studio spaces are kind of the most important aspect of this. The only other connection that we felt was important is that you have these sort of gallery openings and that sort of thing. We did make kind of the front door of this, and we'll go up to a better scale plan, essentially 
that same experience where you come in and look out to this and we envision that out behind it there'll be a kind of a clearing not a not a heavily landscaped space but really a clearing kind of uh, we imagine that in the spirit of spring island of a kind of a natural clearing but a place that kind of draws you out to get in the midst of that uh, space you want to So this is just a bigger version of the same plan, but in color. And they put in parking to begin with and the ability to add some parking. And essentially, you're going to come in between the administrative building and the studio building. There's an entry into each. This also keeps the cost down by not you know, putting all these things together and covering all these connections and that sort of thing. And keeps us more in contact with the outdoors, which is a kind of an important thing here. So you're going to come in here, studio, studio, clay building, and then going on through, and the porch element, and the clearing behind it. Maybe we could go to the plan. The plan came about a combination of the committee putting together what they needed, and I think that's been gone over quite a bit and studied quite a bit. And so by the time it got to us, it was really more a matter of adapting those basic needs to a kind of a simple building prototype. And again, we've gone through a kind of a metal building study and then this building study with the board building. And we've kind of adapted their structural system and tried to make the building fit that, not, not the other way around. And so that creates some of the rhythm of the openings and the base system to this. And we expect some of that to be exposed inside. It's a bit different than this, which is a little, this is a little more timber framey, but essentially so that inside it's gonna be more of a kind of a workman space. Exposed light fixtures and probably some exposed ductwork, I would imagine, that sort of thing. Um, I think maybe the plan would be easier for you all to look at individually and just look at the parts and pieces of it. We could go on. The initial studies for the outside, this is a metal building, so this is a metal skin, and we're going to play with some of the things, some of the variables that we have to work with, but we can use different colors on the building in terms of the metal system that they have. Uh, it would have a metal roof on it. Uh, there's a big cutout on the back side, which is again uh, behind the gallery, because we imagine that if you had some kind of an event in the gallery, typically again the attachment to the outside and being able to flow out onto that porch and perhaps out into that clearing is kind of significant. And uh, these are the big windows that we're talking about on the back side. And just to give you some kind of a scale reference, the bottom of these windows starts at about three feet. So we're trying to get this head height up as high as we can again so that you're looking out and up into the live oak forest. We're still working on some final details of this and exact heights and that sort of thing. And again, uh, the Morton building uh, folks have been working very closely with us to help coordinate this. This is the smaller admin building. And it's got the kind of the admin office in it. It's got a little snack kitchen in it. And it's got a visiting artist studio. We're gonna keep it tight that way. And then the lower building is the, the kiln building, which is really mostly a kind of a screen porch, essentially, with the kilns in it. So there's kind of outdoor activity area covered and protected and an area for the kilns. And we're still, again, studying the exterior of this, but we're going to keep it in the Morton building system. <coughs> and then we've done some eye candy. There's disparities between the elevations and the plans and the perspectives and the sharp-eyed people in the audience may see, you know, well, this window looks bigger than that window and so forth. This thing has continued to adjust and evolve as we've understood the more building system, as we've got some little bits and pieces of additional feedback. And so we're still doing the final coordination of those elements. But the basic thing is when you come in that squiggle drive and parking that you saw, and this is as if you were just coming in there, you would see kind of a corner of the, of the clay building and then that back of that building and try to depict a 
the sense of those live oaks. We've got the live oaks in the right position. They're, they're my interpretations of them. I think an important thing that, that I want to point out here, and they often you don't see it. When you see a lot of elevation growing, you see some little trees around something. And when you draw trees to the real scale of these trees and buildings to the real scale, you really understand these buildings are miniature compared to the kind of tree cover we have. So this is accurate. This building will be hovering down underneath these trees. This drawing is as if you came up to the sort of traffic loop and the drop off and you'd be coming up between the two buildings, going into the main building where you come into the gallery, going into the administrative building. We're probably, we want to have, we want to kind of exploit this little gap between these two buildings because we want to draw people out to that clearing as well. And again, just using all the little gestures of the site planning to make this thing glue tightly to this site and make it engaging to be outdoors here as well as indoors. And there's one last drawing on here. This is as if you walked out, you know, beyond the clearing and out, kind of out towards the road and looked back. So this is kind of looking at it from the north side. So these are those two studio spaces. This is the covered porch environment out behind the gallery. It's a space that we imagine that the people working in there could use and they'd also circulate out there and perhaps do something out here and do plein air painting or something like that. That's all I got. <laughs> also a model that, we'll, uh, that, that Dan will unveil. Uh, a few more slides and then we'll be ready for any questions that you might have. Uh, let's talk for a second about the, the need for an art barn. Does, does the club's art program uh, really need a new facility? Well, here, here's some information that, that uh, uh, is worth considering. More than 50% of us participate in art programs. They could be workshops, uh, creative groups, uh, we've attended a lecture or a demonstration or a reception. That's, that's over 50% of us. And participation in the last two years has increased 76%. In the last five years, workshop participation has increased 103%. Creative group membership has increased 111%. Artist showcase participation has increased 47%. And what's really important to consider in all of this is that uh, because of capacity issues, members were turned away from almost a quarter of all of the workshops that were offered in 2017. So that there's definitely a capacity issue. Uh, obviously, demand has increased dramatically. Uh, and uh, when you consider the projections that uh, that there are going to be a significant number of home starts uh, within the 2017 to 2021 time frame, uh, demand should continue its trajectory. Uh, with respect to capacity, the old art barn, Studio A, is 952 square feet. The Studio B is 708 square feet. Each of the two new art barn studios uh, measure out at 1,700 square feet. So that's 70 or 80 percent larger than Studio A and 100 percent, 140 percent larger than Studio B. And just as a frame of reference, this area here is 1,800 square feet, almost 1,900 square feet. So those studios are are approximately this size. So that they are, they are considerable. Will 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 the art this new art barn meet the anticipated demand? Uh, we, we think that it will. Does Spring Island need a new art barn? Uh, you know, the art programs have become a, uh, an essential differentiator, uh, uh, an amenity that is very distinctive to Spring Island. Uh, yet the art program 
is, is an under-leveraged um, um, amenity. And I'll tell you what I mean about that. Golf and fitness and dining amenities here are really top tier. And anybody who comes to look at real estate on the island is going to be toured through that great facility over there, and the dining facilities and the golf facility. Well, I checked in with some of the folks at, uh, at the real estate office, and the old art barn is kind of a drive-by proposition. And if, if there are a number of people working on projects, why, they may stop so that um, prospective home buyers can meet some of the uh, artists here, but it's not normally a stop to that, uh, you know, to underline Spring Island's commitment to, to the arts. So, so it's obvious that it's going to add value to Spring Island ownership. The, the judgment that you have to make is whether it's worth $4,300 a, a, a household. Uh, and, and I would encourage us to look through this uh, in, in another lens. The art, a new art barn would be a great win for the art program, but could it be a win for members who don't participate in art programs? Well, the club would welcome other uses for the space when they don't conflict with scheduled art classes and workshops. Uh, in much the same way that the summer house is administered by Deb and Dan, these other uses would be permitted and scheduled with club management and helpful coordination from Pam, Pam Brickell. Now, I can imagine, it's easy for me to imagine it as musical rehearsal spaces, uh, be a step up from my wife's sewing room. Uh, it would be great musical performance spaces they, it, they would be rentable spaces for people that were having parties or um, rehearsal, wedding rehearsal parties and that sort of thing. Be a great place for the trust to have its leadership dinner uh, or the, the fundraising meetings in the fall. And on another note, I would hasten to add that that <coughs> the site is is big enough so that space exists if we ever want to build a performing arts facility in the future or if we needed additional parking. So I think it is safe to say that a new art barn could be a big win for people who aren't necessarily participating in the arts programs. Uh, and the old art barn, what would, what would happen to the old art barn? Well, as I think most people know, the uh, old art barn, uh, as it's now known, uh, is owned by the trust. And the trust would become the sole user of that space. Studio A is likely to be refurbished by the trust as a dedicated classroom for the Master Naturalist program and other educational initiatives. Uh, there would be some offices uh, in, the, in that art barn uh, for Carl and, and perhaps for Whitfield. And the cottage that would be vacated would be dedicated to ha housing trust visitors, making for easier, deeper collaborations with researchers who are working with the trust that might come from other geographies. So from here, uh, we, we have another presentation that we're going to make on uh, Monday morning at 9 o'clock. Come back if you want to hear this all over again, uh, or if you have other questions. Uh, we assume there'll be some other folks who weren't able to make it to this presentation. Uh, we'll offer it up on Monday morning, and we'll keep offering it until people's questions are, are uh, answered. We're going to reflect on the feedback that we get here and between now and the next meeting and after the next meeting, and we're going to incorporate it as appropriate. And the community would then vote on whether to uh, move forward with this uh, sometime before our April town meeting. And finally, if, if this is approved, uh, construction would start uh, in June, June of 2018, with a possible ribbon cutting as early as uh, spring in 2019. So my part of the presentation has come to an end, and Gig is now going to take your questions and direct them to the appropriate people. Uh, thank you for your uh, attention and your patience.